Hello everyone, welcome back with another amazing video. In this particular video, we'll be learning another very important Python concept, which is nothing but Python input. As of now, we have seen how we can print any kinds of data with the help of print function, but we haven't seen how we can take any kinds of input data from the user and that particular data how to print in the console. So let's go to our code editor and try to understand this particular concept. So guys, I'm going to use another amazing code editor, which is nothing but Jupyter Notebook. So how to use this particular Jupyter Notebook, let me show you. So if you want to use your Jupyter Notebook, first of all, open up your directory and inside that just try to open up your Anaconda prompt. So let me open up my Anaconda prompt. So here is my Anaconda prompt. So here, first of all, I have to change my local drive. So you can see I'm inside C drive currently, uh, but the folder I have opened, it is inside E drive. So how to change inside E drive? For this, just write this particular command. So E and give this particular clone symbol. And if I press enter, now you'll see that I will be redirecting to this particular E drive. Now inside that, I will just redirect to this particular location. I'll copy this particular location. I will open up my Anaconda prompt again. And I'll just write one command called cd that means change directory. And here I'm going to paste this particular link. Now if I execute, you'll see that. Now here you can see uh, this particular directory is changed and now I'm inside Python tutorials folder. Now if you want to open up your Jupyter Notebook inside this particular directory, just simply write this particular command called Jupyter, Jupyter Notebook. Now if I press enter, you will see that your Jupyter Notebook would be opened. So guys, as you can see, my Jupyter Notebook is opened and this is the interface of Jupyter Notebook. So here, first of all, uh, I'll just create a new file. So I'll just take a new notebook. Just click here, click on the new button and take a notebook. Let me zoom this particular screen. So I'll click on the new and take a new notebook. So this is same like your uh, collab notebook. Uh, in collab notebook also you used to get a cell, right? Cell to execute your code. So here also you will get the similar kinds of interface. But uh, it is running on your local machine. But the collab was running on the Google server actually. Okay. So here it is telling just try to select the kernels. So here I'll be selecting this particular Python kernel. I'll just try to select this particular kernel. And you can see this particular kernel is set. Now if you want to test whether this particular uh, like environment is working fine or not. Simply you can just write one print statement. Let's say I'll just do one print statement. I'll just write hi. Now if I press uh, shift and enter, you will see that this particular message will be printed. Now if you're getting this particular message, that means congratulations, you are uh, successfully able to launch your Jupyter Notebook. Now first of all, give the name of this particular file. So let's say uh, here we are learning Python input. I'll just rename it. Uh, I think everything is fine. Let me zoom this particular screen a little bit. Yeah, now I think everything is fine. So before starting with this particular uh, input concept, first of all, I want to uh, tell you why this particular input is uh, required. Why uh, we should use this particular input inside Python? Because if you see that we are having two kinds of application uh, in the software industry. Uh, one is like static application. Let me just write down called static, uh, static application. And uh, another is dynamic application. Okay, dynamic application. So in static application, actually, you don't need to pass any kinds of input. Let's say uh, if I give any kinds of real time example, let's say calendar. Okay, calendar, then let's say uh, clock. So if you're using this particular application, so here you don't need to provide any kinds of input. Only you just try to open this particular application and you just try to see the dates or let's say times and all right. But whenever I'm talking about dynamic application, let's say I'll give you another example. Let's say YouTube. Okay, then let's say Facebook okay and so on so these are the actually dynamic applications so here you usually pass any kinds of input let's say you have opened up your youtube and in the search button you are searching something you are searching for anything right so there actually you are passing any kinds of input so this is called dynamic application so these two kinds of application are available so whenever you are creating any kinds of static application you don't need to take any kinds of input from the user but whenever you are creating any kinds of dynamic application there you have to take the input from the user but currently whatever software actually it is being created everything is like dynamic application all the software takes the input right so that's why actually we need to use this particular input concept inside programming now let's see how we can take the input from the user so let me just uh, make this particular cell as a markdown so for this what i can do i'll just click on code and here is a markdown option just try to select and if i just press enter uh see it has it has become markdown but i want actually smaller view i'll add some more hash here now i think it would be fine right so in python if you want to take any kinds of input from the user you have to use one function called input so this is the function guys so this function name is input now see if i write this particular function 
and if i just uh, press shift and enter you can also execute your code from here so this is the run button if i execute uh, if i click on this particular button you'll see that uh, this particular cell has been executed and if you want to stop it so here is a option called interrupt kernel just try to interrupt the kernel see it will stop and if you want to execute from the keyboard you, what you can do you can press shift and enter again okay if you press shift and enter now see one input box would be visible okay see there is one input box is visible now inside that you can pass any kinds of input let's say i'll give one input let's say i'll give my name buppy now if i just press enter you will see that whatever input i have given it has automatically printed in the console okay that means the input was buppy and buppy is printed as a output now you can ask me uh, we can only give the string type uh, like data in this particular input function no you can give any kinds of like data you can give any kinds of data let's say if i again execute this particular cell now let's say i want to give any kinds of number i can give again append uh, if i uh, press this particular enter you will see that this particular number would be printed i can also pass any kinds of let's say uh, a floating type value also let's uh, let's say if i execute this particular cell see everything is printed in the console but one thing i think you have noticed whatever input i am giving it is directly getting printed but here i want to store this particular value in a variable so how to do it i think i already taught you the variable concept so if you want to store it in a variable so just try to define that particular variable let's say my variable name is var and inside that uh, i want to store this particular value so here i'll just write this particular input function and if i now execute my program now see uh, it is asking for the input let's say here i'm giving my name and if i execute see now you can see uh buppy was my input now if you want to see the output you can simply print this particular variable i'll just use print function and inside that I'll just pass this particular variable. Now see if I execute, puppy would be printed. Now you can see that I'm able to uh, store this particular data inside a variable. But here, uh, one very important things I want to tell you. Let's say if I check this particular type of this particular variable. Okay, let's say if I want to check this particular type, uh, you'll see that it's a string type because here uh, puppy was a string type data. But let's say whenever I'm giving any kinds of, whenever I'm giving any kinds of number, let's say I'm giving one, two, three. So it's an integer data I'm passing. So let's say here, one integer data I have passed. Now if I print this particular variable, you'll see that this particular number is getting printed. But whenever I'm trying to check the type of this particular variable, it is again telling it's a string. Let's say instead of giving integer, if I give floating value as well, let's say if I give 1.23, let's say this is the floating value. And if I again execute this particular program, you'll see that this is a floating value. But again, if I check this particular type, you'll see that it is telling it's a string. So what is happening actually uh, you can pause this particular video and you can comment out uh, what is the issue here okay what is the issue here just try to figure out that particular problem and try to tell me in the comment now let me tell you why it is considering all the data in a string format see whenever you are using this particular input function okay whenever you are using this particular input function by default this particular input converts all the data in a string type let's say in the input user may pass any kinds of data type they may pass like their name they may pass their age they may pass their gender any kinds of data they may pass okay so that's why whenever python designed this particular input function uh, they were thinking uh, if i'm uh, creating this particular input function i should create in a common format so that if anyone passing any kinds of data that should work properly so that's why they designed this particular input function in such a way so whenever user is giving any kinds of data it would be converted to the string it would be converted to the string because a string is a common type data so if you are uh, storing your data in a string type okay there won't be any kinds of error because number floating value okay then boolean character string anything i can mention as a string okay without any kinds of error so that's why they consider whenever they are passing any kinds of input to the input function this would be converted to the string and whenever user need this particular number as an integer they can convert it later on okay there is another concept inside python called uh, type conversion i'll uh, discuss this particular type conversion uh, as of now just try to consider we can convert the type let's say this is the let's say this is the string type i can convert this particular string type to integer type easily so so here i can convert this particular data to the floating data type so now you can see it's a string data type but i can convert it to floating data type so for this uh, what i have to do i have to use one uh, function called float okay float is a function and inside that just try to pass this particular variable okay and i will store in a variable that's a var and now if i print the type of this particular variable right now you will see that 
now this particular uh, string type data has been converted to the floating data type so this is called type conversion okay i will discuss this particular type conversion in detail no need to worry as of now just try to consider whenever uh, you need any kinds of data type you can do the type conversion let's say you have given this particular input as in a integer number now if you want to take this particular integer number you can do the type conversion okay you can do the type conversion that time you can use int okay int function instead of floating you have to uh, use int function for this right so this is a simple concept actually i just wanted to tell you now i think you saw that how we can take any kinds of input and whenever uh user is passing any kinds of input uh, by default it is converting to the string data type and whenever i need uh with any other data type i can do the type conversion for this right now one thing let me discuss uh see whenever i'm using this particular input function let's say if i define this particular input again and if i execute this particular program you'll see that it is giving me one empty box okay it is giving me one empty box so as a user actually i don't know what i have to pass here so instead of taking this particular empty box i can uh, like show one message here like what kinds of data i want to take from the user so for this what you can do so first of all let me stop the kernel so inside input function you can give a message actually let's say here you can provide a message enter your name okay enter your name now see if i execute this particular program now it is asking enter your name that means it is giving one message now as an user i can get to know okay so here i have to pass my name i think you have seen like in the facebook whenever you are trying to uh, create your account it will ask your name it will ask your age right so that's how they are also taking the input now here i can pass my name let's say my name is bappi and if i just enter see bappi would be stored in the variable now if i print this particular variable see i can also directly print uh, in this particular cell so i don't need to take any kinds of print function if you are using jupyter notebook directly also you can mention this particular variable it will print that particular value in the console either also you can use this particular print function okay inside a print function also you can define your uh, variable so both way you can print the value i have showed you see now it is uh, printing my name so i hope guys this particular uh, input concept is clear now let me do uh, one small project on top of this particular uh, input concept so if you do this particular small uh, actually exercise uh, your uh, input concept would be more clear so here we'll be uh, creating one uh, small calculator application that particular calculator would be able to only do the uh, addition operation so let me just uh, show you what are the steps actually we are going to perform in this particular application see here we'll be implementing one uh, we'll be implementing one simple calculator so what are the functionality this particular calculator will have uh, it will uh, only have three functionality it will uh, first of all take the input it will take two number it will take two number take two number as an as an input uh, it will perform only add operation okay add operation and it will print the results in console console so this is a simple application we'll be uh, implementing with the help of this particular uh, input concept so we'll be uh, trying to implement these are the functionality one by one okay so let's see how we can uh, do this particular uh, exercise with the help of python so again i will go back to my code editor and here i can uh, mark down this particular uh, exercise input okay using input so here first of all i have to take two number from the user so here i can just write num1 so this is going to be my first variable and user will pass uh, okay one number so here i can give a message enter the first number okay entered the first number then i will take the second number as an input so again i'll call this particular input and inside that uh, i'll copy this particular message as it is entered the second number okay now one thing i have to do because if you see if i execute this particular program if i execute this particular program and if i uh, enter the first number let's say first number is 2 
and second number is 3. Now see, if I print it, if I print this particular number 1 and number 2, see, it is uh, printing as a string type data because I already told you. So if I just show you the type, it's a string type data. Although I passed integer, but it is printing as a string. Okay, because I already told you, if you are giving any kinds of data to the input function, it will automatically convert to the string format, right? But here, as, uh, whenever I'm creating calculator application, here I can't pass any kinds of string type data. Okay, so if you see any kinds of calculator, there you can pass any kinds of integer data or any kinds of floating data. That means decimal value, right? So either you can convert this particular data in an integer format, either you can convert this particular data in a floating format. So here, uh, what I can do, just to simplify this particular application, I'll just convert everything to the floating floating number, okay? Float number. Because all the number I will consider as a float number, okay? So here I will convert this particular number to a float number. And if you want to convert, how to do it? So in the float function, just try to write your input, okay? So I already showed you one demo, I think you remember. So here I showed you one type casting operation. So if you want to convert anything inside that particular function, you have to give this particular data, right? So here again, I'll write this particular float and I'll pass this particular input to the float. Now, if I execute this particular uh, code, now if I again pass my number one and let's say two. Now, if I print this particular type, you'll see that this particular number has converted to my floating number right now. Okay, you can see two. Uh, here I'm converting to the float. That's why it's coming 2.0. Okay, it's fine because again, it's a two only at that, right? Now see, I've successfully handled this particular situation. Now what I have to do? So this particular step is completed. We have taken the input from the user. Now I have to uh, add this particular number. Okay, I have to add this particular number. So let me add this particular number. How to add this particular number? So again, I can take one variable called result. Okay, results. And simply I can do number one plus number two uh, so i have added this particular number with the help of this particular uh, add operator now the last step i have to print this particular result so to print this particular results i can use this particular print function and inside that i can pass this particular results now if i execute this particular program now let's say the first number i will give two the second number i will give three now if i press enter see the result is five 2 plus 3 is 5. Now, if I again execute this particular program, now if I give, let's say, 2.3 and 3.4, you'll see that the answer would be 5.6999 and so on. That means this particular uh, calculator is working fine and it is only able to do the addition operation as of now. Going forward, we'll be learning more uh, like uh, complex exercise, we'll be uh, implementing the entire calculator application and all. As of now, just to explain this particular input concept, I, I just showed you this particular exercise, okay, uh, so that your concept would be more clear. So I hope guys, uh, you have understood this particular input concept, uh, why it is required and why it is so important, okay, whenever you are creating any kinds of application in the software industry. So if you have liked this particular video guys, so you can share this particular video with your friends and family and please try to subscribe to the channel. With that guys, uh, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.